Welcome back. Vermont's covered bridges are part of what makes the state a destination for travelers. And there's a museum in southern Vermont that's dedicated to preserving their history. Cat Villianzoni takes us inside the Covered Bridge Museum. Hidden inside the Bennington Center for the Arts is a museum dedicated to a quintessential piece of Vermont history, the Covered Bridge. It's a fascinating thing, and, and as you learn more about it, it gets more fascinating. Founder Bruce Lawmeister was inspired when a retired CEO and Covered Bridge enthusiast came to him with research. It took me about two weeks to read all the books he gave me, and finally I said, you know, John, you're right, we'll build it. It is a, an exact replica of the Henry Bridge here on the Batten Kill, except it's twice as wide because we needed that to, to uh, accommodate all the things in the museum. Among those things, the original tools used to build the bridges. We managed to find every one of them in haunting antique shops and old places and got them all. What you won't find in here? Power tools or nails. These are some of the most modern designs that still exist. They were inspired by barns and held everything from carriages to cars to trains. The railroad bridges didn't last long because back in those days, you know, embers coming out of the, the steam engines and they set the bridges on fire. He tells me it was normal to see a bridge covered in snow on the inside. One of the great questions of average tourists said, why did they cover the bridges? Was it to keep the snow off? And we all sort of laugh and say, no, it was just the opposite. In the winter, you had to put snow on them so the sleds could go through. They were the covered bridges were covered to protect them so they didn't rot out. And they did a pretty good job because a lot of them are about 200 years old. <laughs> they don't build them like they used to, I guess you could say. <laughs> Melanie Dennison came here from Wells to connect with the bridges that she says represent Vermont. She says the wealth of history surprised her. I didn't realize that a lot of the bridges each have their own individual stories. I just always thought that they were just bridges to get you from one side of the river to the other. But sometimes those rivers won. And these are all historic photographs of the, that flood in the 1920s, 15 inches of rain in one week. He says some 600 covered bridges were washed away. Since then, their numbers have dwindled even further. Today, that number is down to just about 100. They're shown in green dots on the map right here. These orange dots where the bridges once stood but have been since lost to time. That map is constantly evolving thanks to visitors who tell Bruce about the bridges they saw while growing up. We keep learning in new ones. Uh, it probably won't happen too much longer because most of the people that remember those ones have died now. But as the bridges and the people who remember them gradually move on, visitors like Melanie will take some of their history home with them. Because once they're gone, what do we have left of the history? I mean, if we don't preserve what is here today, time will erase it. And the Covered Bridge Museum aims to make sure that never happens. Kat Villianzoni, Channel 3 News, Bennington. Isn't that something they had to put snow on them in the winter to get the sleighs through? Yeah, pretty amazing. Oh, it is so neat. If you want to go to the Bennington Center for the Arts, it is open Wednesday through Monday and closed on Tuesdays. Admission to the center is $9 for adults. Yeah, it's one of those things that's just so iconic to this area. As you drive around, you're like, hey, look, there's the covered bridge. It, I still get excited when I have to cross one. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it's cool. It's so neat.